I got a poster! Um, and I've got Sophie Alpert and Abramov and Byron and all the people um, from this React documentary that I just went and saw, and that is going up on a wall, you best believe. Um, but in this video, I want to talk to you about the React documentary. I want to talk to you about um, the good, the bad, and my one takeaway. And also, we can look back to a, an old video I did reacting to the trailer and seeing um, if, what, if I got what I wanted, right? I'll put a link to that old video up here. And for now, let's get into it. But before we do, I need to shout out Honeypot. Honeypot made this. Honeypot, if you don't know, is a Berlin-based recruiting company. <laughs> they are a recruiting company. So developers make profiles, and then companies join Honeypot and can find developers to hire, right? They're a developer marketplace. But they have full-time employees who are filmmakers to make movies and stuff because community. <laughs> I love that. I think that's awesome. And a massive shout out to Honeypot. They have not sponsored this video. Although if, if Honeypot, if you're watching and you want to leave a super thanks. But like, it's uh, it's just something I want to applaud. And not just Honeypot, but Ida. Here, Ida made this with her team. And listen, you need to give her a follow because the work she's done is phenomenal and beyond measure. Just off the bat, I want to tell you that. It's, it's the production quality is nuts. And we'll talk more about that. But now what I want to do is look at my video reacting to this trailer and kind of see what I hope to get out of it and check, like, did, did I get that or not? Okay, so to do that, let's go to YouTube. Oh, gosh, I'm watching myself. That's what this has come to. It's a bit awkward, but let, let's do it. So what did I want? I wanted, let's see. Um, I wanted, right, buy-in. This is what I wanted. I wanted to see how they convince people to, like, adopt JSX. Uh, is there a big, I remember, there, oh, there we go, getting buy-in. I wanted that. And then I wanted DevRel tips to see how React grew the community. And then I wanted to see their licensing struggles um, with, you know, thinking about like MIT license or closed source or how, or, or like more restrictive licenses, GPL v2 or something. Um, there was a whole licensing controversy in like 2017, I think. Anyway, patents. Um, so there, there, was, there was the JSX drama, there was the DevRel story, and there was licensing. JSX drama, they talked about at length. Um, the DevRel, the community story, yes, I got so much um, out of it, like thinking about community, but the patents thing was not discussed, which is fine. Uh, it's not, not, not such a big deal. Um, I was around when the patents thing was happening anyway. Um, but that's maybe shallow. What I want to talk to you about in depth is the three things that I found good, um, some criticisms about the movie, and then we'll share with you my one big takeaway, okay? Um, the good things are, listen, the, the production quality is unreal. Is unreal. I actually got to talk shop with a few of the filmmakers as a filmmaker here, hi, video. Myself, um, we got to talk about equipment and stuff, and they used some pretty good equipment on here. Um, and it's impressive. And the cool thing is, it, like, Honeypot is not a like a video thing. They're not a filmmaking company. They're, they're not use, They're not going to have like the best of everything, but they did a tremendous amount of high quality work with the stuff they had. And I think that's worth calling out. Second thing I absolutely loved about this is there's no fluff. Like the documentary is like an hour and 20 minutes, but there's no time wasting. There's no minute wasted. Every minute has value. In fact, a lot of people who came out of this said, I didn't even realize it was an hour 20. It was very well done to the point where you're never bored and there's never a wasted moment. So really, really well done. Number three. That, that I really liked is, um, or rather that I learned even, was that Instagram was the beta test for React. I did not know that when Facebook acquired Instagram, that that was the test bed, that Instagram was used, using React uh, first and most. I did not know that Netflix used React so early and then advocated for React. And that was fascinating and eye-opening. Um, I also got to see the early community and how Sophie was the first uh, like production user and so on. It shed light on history that I didn't have. Being a React developer who's been writing React for like years. So um, extremely good. I did hear some criticisms about the documentary that I'll share. Um, the first criticism, honestly, I think is not even valid. I don't think it's, it's not a criticism from me. It's a criticism from people. And I just want to take a moment here in this video and refute it, okay? The criticism is this. They say that there, there weren't enough women interviewed in the documentary. Like, it was just Sophie, and that's it. And I have a problem with this because, like, for one thing, it's out of the filmmaker's control, like, who agrees to be interviewed or not. Um, and secondly, if the inter the documentary, the filmmaker interviewed mostly men in a male-dominated industry, which was even more male-dominated at the time, I would argue that this is actually a good thing that a documentary is doing is shedding light on a real issue of the lack of diversity and inclusion. Like it's actually showing you the truth as opposed to covering up. And I would argue that if there were more women interviewed just because of some ratio, it would have actually covered up the unequal balance of gender diversity. So um, I've heard this as a criticism. I don't agree with it. Um, second criticism, this one I, I do agree with this as a filmmaker. It's not a big deal. Um, but And it may have also just been the, the room where we watched it, the theater. Um, the audio in some places was not up to spec and, and like it, the the frequency the higher frequencies that like thousand hertz ish was a bit tinny and sharp and it was uneven between scenes it's a small technical thing it doesn't really matter that much um but i do want to give a balanced picture i did talk to the people who made the documentary um and we agreed um but you know who cares like my videos are like also not the best it's not the point the storytelling um was unbelievable and i think you know if you want to get a holistic view of react done in a masterful way i think it delivers um those are the good those are the criticisms i've heard and have had i think the Let's finish with the takeaway. This this documentary, in my opinion, right? The take my opinion with a grain of salt, by the way. Like it's if you're watching this, thank you, but like, don't you have something better? Anyway, <laughs> um, my takeaway, the one takeaway is is that I believe good art makes you feel something. And not just makes you feel something, but changes you. Um, and this documentary did that for me. Um, how you, you might be asking? Um, I got to see React as a baby. Um, and, and I got to see this baby be fed by a very early community. I got to see how Sophie used it at Khan Academy and then kind of started contributing and started asking questions and started supporting people. 
I got to see how um, you know Andrew and and, and um, Sunil and all the, the the team came together, and it's very interesting for me specifically because I I go to a lot of React conferences and I see the, the core team at multiple places, and I see they seem to have some type of bond, like they seem to be very close, right? Um, and it's understandable, but looking at the history shows me the reason and and kind of the basis for this really special, beautiful close bond that exists, and and the thing that has forged this close bond is, is open source. Is open so like these people ended up like collaborating on pull requests and issues and like Dan Abramov said in the documentary was like it was nice to put three dimensions to avatars. Um, so it's this bond formed over open source and it really cemented in me the beauty and the value of, of open source work. That is how the documentary has impacted me and changed me. Um, it, it it kind of convicted me of, of not doing as much open source as I even want to and motivated me to do more. That that is the the real impact. It, it captured the spirit of open source so well and left a lasting impact and motivation on me to do more of it and support more communities and engage that world more um, because of the beauty of that community. And it really highlighted that well. And so that's my takeaway. I'm literally intentionally planning to put more effort into open source because I love it. And it, I'm kind of kicking myself for not um, enjoying that all these years. So with that, it was a beautiful underdog story of how React started as this thing that was hated and then grew to what we know and love today. But those are just my thoughts. I'm curious. What do you think? Leave a comment below or at me on Twitter for now. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.